Bula Vinaka, my name is Letia and I'm from the beautiful island of Laos and I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. My name is Casey, I'm from Tavua. We love Today FM in Tavua. Today FM rocks. My name is Selina, I'm from Tavenga Vengamba. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. Bula, my name is Carlo. I love listening to the music in Today FM in Malak Ellen. Today FM rock. Today's hit music on Today FM. In the news tonight, meningococcal disease claims four lives. FEA fully corporatized and has a new name. And 75% of homes in Kandavu damaged due to TC Kenny. From the studios of FBC Suva, Jackie Smith. The life-threatening meningococcal disease has claimed four lives in Fiji so far this year, with two others also dying from suspected related cases. Health Minister Rosie Akbar says the age group that's being heavily affected is between 12 months to 19 years of age. Akusita Tale reports the government is doing all it can to procure the vaccine and administer it for free to these age groups. All meningococcal cases as of March 21st were less than 19 years of age and the government's top priority now is to vaccinate around 340,000 Fijians in this age group. Of this, males accounted 63% while females accounted for 37%. Madam Speaker. The health minister says the disease continues to increase with 46 cases confirmed so far with Central Division topping the list at 27, 16 from the west, 2 from the north and 1 from the east. Akbar says a free vaccination campaign will commence as soon as vaccination arrives in the country and will run for about seven weeks. The service will also be available on Saturdays, Madam Speaker, and this is to help busy parents and caretakers to bring their children uh, for this vaccination during the, 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 the week break. Considering the disease burden observation, high risk group and uh, operational effectiveness, the campaign will roll out. Uh, campaign rollout will start with intensive efforts in the central division. There are plans to have 53 teams mobilized around the country as temporary fixed and mobile post service providers to administer the vaccine. For now, it's a waiting game. The government says vaccination for specific health staff is also being considered. Otherwise, personal protective equipment and infection prevention control will be used by health officials when dealing with these cases. Akosita Tali, FBC News. The Fiji Electricity Authority is now known as the Energy Fiji Limited after it was fully corporatized last night. While unveiling the new name and its corporatization, Minister for Public Enterprise Ayas Said Kayum says corporatization of FEA means the company now has a capital structure and shares which are wholly owned by government. Said Kayum says the new name shows a new era for FEA and the work they will do from now onwards. Anur Avula reports. Being corporatized was a huge milestone for the company. The Minister for Enterprise says the corporatization will not affect its staff. Corporatization does not mean that any contracts or staff of the FEA will be affected. There will be no job losses as a result of this transition and no one will be made worse off. What it does mean is this. Through this corporatization, the Fijian government is now offering 5% of the total shares in Energy Fiji Limited to all EFL customers in the form of non-voting shares completely for free. With corporatization there will be a new direction uh, with in terms of how we manage the company going forward. The board, from a board's perspective, it, it will really have to run more as a private company as opposed to a statutory authority. Saad Kayum says eligible Fijians who are EFL customers will be granted a chance to become a shareholder in a billion dollar asset company. Specifically, we are offering one parcel of 250 shares to those domestic customers, prepaid customers or postpaid customers who receive a subsidy under the electricity subsidy scheme, while non-subsidized customers will be offered one parcel of 150 shares. He says low-income households will be the biggest beneficiaries from this corporatization. Application forms will be available from next week. The offer period will open from Friday and close on the 29th of next month. Anna Ravulo, FBC News. Tensions escalated in Parliament when the opposition made allegations of the youth public consultations being a vote-buying exercise. This, does, this did not settle well with government, who took to the floor claiming that the opposition did not respect nor understand the value of the country's youth, who are the future. Rachel Nath has more. How dare 
they come into this parliament and say that our youth should not be empowered. Our youth need to be empowered, Madam Speaker. The public consultations were politicized by opposition MP Nico Nawaikula, who claims the manner in which these consultations are conducted is point scoring for the government. A consultation to school children clearly is a vote buying exercise. <laughs> Especially when the minister attends. True, it will be good, but limited to the teachers and the permanent secretary. So could you inform the House why can't you limit the consultation and give it to the to the teachers? and the permanent secretary, instead of the Honorable Minister going directly. The claims were immediately rubbished by Economy Minister Ayar Said Kayyum, who says the ideologies of Nawai Kula encapsulates the thinking of the opposition. They talk about democracy all the time, not knowing what it means. This is part and parcel of a democratic process where you empower all members of our society. This age-old thinking in Fiji that only the elderly people should be making the decisions should be swept away. We believe that a youth Said Kiyum claims the opposition's view was not only taking away the youth's empowerment, but was also disrespecting young Fijians. Said Kiyum also told the House the opinions of youth are so important that the minister himself needed to hear them out. Rachel Nath, FBC News. Over 800 homes have sustained damage on Kandabu in the aftermath of tropical cyclone Kenny. The National Disaster Management Office Director Anare Lewaningila confirms that based on assessments now coming in, TC Kenny affected more than 75% of the island with more than 100 evacuation centres still activated. Maggie Boyle reports. In the wake of a severe Category 3 cyclone, the island of Kandavu was not spared. We have uh, received that a total of 804 houses have been damaged. Of these 804, 201 has been uh, fully destroyed and uh, around 603 which is a sustained partial damage. The NDMO director says while assessments are ongoing, the magnitude of TC Kenny has been substantial. In Kandavu is a uh, around 75 eh, from the 90 kines. And we could assume that around uh, over even 75% of these communities have been affected from the recent events. Eh? A week after the cyclone and people on the island continue to seek refuge at evacuation centers. Around 104 evacuation centers still active. Those are basically just uh, community halls and uh, uh, some uh, uh, personal uh, houses eh, where people have started to take in some of those uh, relatives who have had their homes destroyed. So in total, there's around 803 evacuees in this 104. The NDMO expects to finalize their figures on damage on the island by the end of this week. Maggie Boyle, FBC News. The 2018-2019 national budget will be delivered on the evening of June 22nd. This was revealed by Economy Minister Aya Said Kayyum in Parliament this morning. Said Kayyum says this was discussed during the business committee meeting in the business committee meeting that the budget will be delivered on the 22nd of June of this year. As we've said, I know it's already out there. So uh, as we said, that we'll present the budget on the 22nd of June and the evening of the 22nd of June uh, of, of this year, Madam Speaker. Still to come, body of farmer found floating in the Ngawa River and coke games to continue despite widespread meningococcal disease. Stay with us. Bula, Kero Mai Singatoka, Kero Ndotali Taka Navarro Rong on the radio Fiji One and Domoi Viti. I have a little bit of a combination of the Bola and Dotali Taka on the radio Fiji One and Domoi Viti. We have a little bit of a talent, the Gurara Mai Naomani, and Roma, we do talent again and the Venezuela level, and we do wrong on the Bar Rong and the radio Fiji One and Domoi Viti. The radio Fiji One and Domoi Viti in the Bonga and the BNN. Opposition MP Nick Nawaikula was asked to withdraw a racial statement he made in Parliament this afternoon. Nawaikula claimed the government was annihilating the rights of indigenous Fijians. He made these remarks during the debate on the report on the petition by landowners of Nawai Levumbua for the payment of full and fair share of royalties for the mining of bauxite. This government has tried to annihilate the rights of a particular ethnic group. 
in this case, the indigenous Fijians. The Honourable Member is trying to impute that government's actions is actually targeted towards one ethnic group. He is claiming that because of this particular incident, we are trying to alienate, annihilate, annihilate, annihilate their indigenous Fijians and their rights. And that is false, Madam Speaker. And that should not be allowed, Madam Speaker. Their right of pre and prior consent. We draw first that the use of that word, which is very strong. Which word, uh, Madam Speaker? Annihilate the yes. indigenous Fijians. It's too, too strong. It's uh, very racist. I'd like you to withdraw that before you continue with the platform. Yes, I withdraw that. The body of the 41-year-old farmer who went missing following a boat collision on Sunday afternoon has been found. The body was found floating in the Gawa River near Dawaira village by villagers at around 10 last night. A post-mortem will be conducted to ascertain the cause of death. The incident happened when two fiberglass boats collided at a bend behind the FSC Lambasa mill in Gawa River. The man was allegedly thrown overboard due to the impact of the crash. Two others involved in the incident received injuries. The victim of a rape case which involved her biological father raping her from the age of 12 till she turned 25 took the stand today at the Suva High Court. It is alleged that her 37-year-old father from January 2005 to December 2017 raped her numerous times at the residence in Nasinu. He has been charged with four counts of rape, two counts of sexual assault, one count of attempted rape and one count of indecent assault. The victim told the court that her father told her that her face reminded him of his wife, the victim's mother. And that was the reason why he wanted sex from her. She said her father would force her to have sex with him two to three times a week when her other siblings would be sleeping at home. She also told the court that she wanted to kill herself as she was disgusted with what her father did to her and that she had given up on life. She said at times her father would come to her room with a knife and hammer and threaten her to have sex with him or else he would hurt her. Intimidated, she would submit to his sexual harassment. The trial continues tomorrow. Despite the continuous threat of the widespread meningococcal disease around the country, the Coca-Cola Games will go ahead as scheduled. However, the Ministry of Health has advised the Games organizers to maintain cleanliness and avoid the spread of the disease during the Games. Ali Kimbia with the story. There's a high risk of the spread of the disease at the Games. However, it's the duty of the organizers to ensure that students are well protected. Basically, my message to the teachers the students and the organizers would be to ensure that uh, children are well advised about the impacts of sharing water bottles, juice, food, and I'm sure um, good sense will prevail and people will abstain from doing this. Akbar is calling on the game organizers to ensure that the safety of students is paramount. This message also go across to all the schools that are participating so we can ensure that there is no spread of this. Of course we are ready to assist our children. So parents, teachers, organizers, please be mindful of this. Coca-Cola Games chief organizer of Wuliwanga says they are aware of the threat. Um, we are aware of that and the, uh, every year the uh, people of the ministry normally come down to, uh, to be part of our games and I believe that they will again be here to do, do um, uh, familiarization on that, uh, awareness on the, on the disease that's coming around. You're right. Um. Ministry of Health officials are expected to provide surveillance during the games to ensure that students are safe. Ali Kimbia, FBC News. The Prime Minister and COP23 President Vorenge Mbaini Marama held a number of side events yesterday at the week-long Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting which is being held in London. The PM first met with the Commonwealth Secretary General, Baroness Patricia Scotland, where discussions focused on the Commonwealth in small states, climate change and the Blue Charter. The PM noted that while at Chogum, he would lobby the other 52 states that make up the international body to address the global threat of climate change and the plastic crisis. Baini Marama also met with Prince Harry, the newly appointed Commonwealth Youth Ambassador, who in his opening address at Chogum highlighted that young people are the answer to the challenges today. The Commonwealth Heads of Government Summit will officially open on Thursday with the leaders' retreat to be held at Windsor Castle. Work is currently being done to develop the first ever national fisheries policy. In Parliament today, Fisheries Minister Semi Koroi Lavesau said, said that the policy will improve the current status of the inshore or coastal fisheries sector. Savaratumbo reports. 
In shore, our coastal fishing is any fishing down up to 30 meters deep. The fisheries minister said this particular sector needs urgent attention. Items such as fisheries management, illegal, unregulated and unreported fishing, marine pollution, poaching and lack of scientific data are some of the initiatives that are being dealt with through line agencies across Fiji. Corella South says they need to place a fishing ban in some preserved marine areas, which was quickly questioned by opposition MP Joseph Andula Kibarata. What criteria do you use to issue licenses, which also contribute to the overfishing of fishing uh, these areas? That is the, uh, con the uh, consultations that is being carried out now, which uh, will establish the species within a, a fishing uh, with the within a fishing area to establish uh, the stock within that and then work out what will be the license number that is, uh, that is, uh, that is to be issued. He adds that they have put in place total ban, seasonal closure and size limits to ensure the sustainability of our marine resources. Sabera Tamboa, FBC News. Three health facilities opened last year to enable the public to have more efficient services and improve quality care. This was highlighted in Parliament by Minister for Health Rosie Akbar. Akbar says these three facilities include the upgraded Lautoka Emergency Department and Operating Theatre, newly constructed McCoy Maternity Unit and Waimaro Health Centre in Ra. She says to improve services, the new facilities have also been equipped with new ambulances. As part of the government fleet, we have 44. Some of, the, some of these ambulances are pretty old and need maintenance on a regular basis. We also work with NFA, we also work with the Fiji Corrections, we work with St. John's to, in, in the provision of ambulance services. Reddy says the river dredging projects carried out so far in the country are showing success. Responding to questions in Parliament, Reddy said this was evident in two major towns during the heavy rain brought by severe tropical cyclone Kenny. He says the ministry is planning flood mitigation projects for the next financial year, which includes the dredging of a number of rivers. Mr. Speaker, you would have noted we had a massive, massive amount of rain in Lambasa. Now, Lambasa town, for the first time ever, Mr. Speaker, was not flooded because of dredging of Gawa River and Lambasa River. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Neri Town, Neri Town, where the honourable member belongs to, this time around, we did not have that level of flooding as, as it was before. Yeah, yeah. Why? Be yes, yes. So, 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 the question is, is it working? Yes, it's working, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> In sports later with Jamie, an increase in the number of schools taking part in the Coke Games this year. But we now join Rachel with business. Thanks, Jackie. Good evening and coming up in business tonight. Coconut Farmer believes they need more support. And in Goin Fiji, new road for people on Coral Island. Stay with us. मैं प्रमिला वायरुकु रेकी रेकी से सुबह मेरी आँख खुलती है तो मैं मिर्ची एफएम सुनती हूँ मिर्ची एफएम इस नंबर वन इट्स सो हॉट हम लोग बार टाउन के केरिया ड्राइवर लोगों ने हम लोग के मिर्ची एफएम सुनो अच्छा लगे मिर्ची एफएम इज हॉट हाय मैं संध्या नारियल रेकी से मेरे सारे दोस्त मिर्ची एफएम सुनते Leading business tonight, a Tavi Uni Copenet farmer believes that more needs to be done to assist them in terms of research and support as the coconut industry is vital to them. Peter Kia, who is also attending a coconut industry development workshop in Nandi, says that these issues surrounding the industry will be raised during the next few days. As Philip Anacaso reports, the Agriculture Ministry also states that they have been assisting these farmers. Coconuts still have a unique potential to support many people. However, coconut farmer Peter Kaya believes that many coconut farmers are opting for fast cash. There's a lot of coconut farmers in the country, but a lot of the coconut farmers are doing a lot of other things at the same time. You're planting Yangona to make some money, you're planting Dalu to get some money. Over the years, coconut farmers have also been badly affected by tropical cyclones, which have destroyed coconut trees. 
Kea believes that the industry could still be a key component for economic growth and employment. We need more people who look at uh, long-term plans instead of how you can make five dollars more tomorrow and then you run and plant uh, Dalo or four years you plant Yangona. If you want to do coconuts, you, you have to think 50 years and uh, we need more of that. We need more of that. We tend to have uh, uh, a nursery establishment where the seed nuts are sourced from, coconut, uh, from the coconut center in Taiwani. Then we do raise it in nursery in the central division. Then it is distributed to farmers uh, free. Eh? Participants from 14 regional countries will be looking at coconut production and seeds systems. Philip and I, Caso, FBC News. And we now join Sharon from HFC Bank with the latest from the financial market. Thank you. A quick update on the global market. The market seemed to be less concerned over Syria and instead preferred to concentrate on macroeconomic and central bank outlooks. On Wall Street, the focus was on corporate earnings. The slight beat on the headline retail sales report was not enough to stop the slide of the US dollar this morning. Their retail sales for March came in better than expected at 0.6% against the 0.4% forecast. However, the Empire State Manufacturing Index fell to 15.8 in April, while analysts were forecasting 18.6. The minutes released by the Reserve Bank of Australia showed the policymakers see little reason for a near-term rate move and cited household debt and China debt as a risk to the Australian economy. Meanwhile, China's economy grew 6.8% in the first quarter of 2018, marking the third straight quarter of 6.8% growth for the world's second largest economy. And that's all topping the headlines for now. Renaka. Thanks for the update, Sharon. Taking a look at today's currency exchange rates up this morning for the Fijian dollar. The Fiji dollar rose against the Chinese yuan, the US dollar, the Kiwi dollar, as well as the PNG Kina. Taking a look at the commodities market, a mixed day with oil prices closing down at 66.55 a barrel. Gold rose to close at 1,347 an ounce, and silver was up as well to close at 16.69 an ounce. And in Goin Fiji tonight, thousands of people on Koro Island are rejoicing the reconstruction of Koro Island Road. Nambasovi Village spokesman Mikaele Matata says the new road has improved their lives significantly as they will no longer have to make long, tiresome journeys to reach their farms. Fiji Roads Authority Chief Executive Jonathan Moore says these efforts are better appreciated when considered against the backdrop of what existed before as Koro was one of the worst affected by tropical cyclone Winston. He says the project scope was completed last year but they carried out additional repairs which included construction of new drainage shaping and construction of pavement. And that's it from Business This Evening. Here's Jamie with Sports. Thanks, Rachel, and good evening in sports tonight. ACS ready to defend Coke Games title. And we hear from Fiji's Commonwealth gold medalist, Eileen Rikamatana. This and more coming up. Defending the Coca-Cola Games Girls Division champions, Andy Rakambau School believes they have what it takes to retain their title. With high expectations to deliver, head coach Antonio Ramboiliku is confident his athletes are ready to perform from Thursday. Luciana Tangi Rakambau reports. Focusing on the huge task ahead, the girls from ACS knows that performing beyond expectations will be the key to retain their title. 
we're still using what we did last year and uh, I think uh, uh, that is more than enough for us to go through this year. But uh, we know that the other schools have stepped up. Uh, they have got national coaches with them, national athletes that are helping them. Hopes are high for the girls from Waimanu. However, they are wary of other schools. Well, I think it's very gentle uh, since we are the defending champions. Uh, everyone is gunning to to challenge the defending champs and also the objective to take the title to other schools. So that alone uh, is, a, uh, is a very big challenge for us. This side will also bank on the national reps to spearhead their campaign. National reps in your team, it's always a boost. And um, we are trying to maintain that uh, tradition in uh, Angela Kamba School. Um, it's Elenani and Makarete still now. Tewa Manukwe girls knows what needs to be executed as other schools from around the country are eager to snatch the title come Thursday. Luciana Tangi Kimbao, FBC Sports. Ten athletes will represent Coral Island High School at this year's Coke Games. After failing to win any medals for the last two years, the school hopes to turn things around this weekend. School coach Josefa Taukeve says they have prepared to their best with the resources available on the island. Just need to participate. We're aiming for medal, but we'll see what goes through in Coca-Cola games. We tend to use whatever we can do in our small ground in Coral Island and the, the, the mountain sides. So we're training from there and means to be here. Organizers of the Fiji finals have confirmed there's an increase in the number of schools competing at this year's event. Coca-Cola marketing manager Lawrence Tickeram says the success of the competition and the atmosphere of the games continues to draw growing interest from far and wide. Luciana Tangedakimbao reports. With the increase in the number of participating schools, this year's Coke Games is expected to be a tough and interesting one. So the numbers have increased uh, in terms of participation, which shows again how much the games means to a lot of students, how much it means to parents, how much it means to the whole of Fiji and to the world, especially to the world. Uh, people are keen to you know, look at this and follow this event because it does show uh, what we Fijians are made of. The Coca-Cola marketing manager says they are working very closely with the police to ensure on the safety of students. We've had uh, preliminary talks with the Fiji police in terms of uh, uh, security details um, and we put a, together a plan uh, just last night with the Fiji police. Uh, there will be over 70 police officers engaged at the event itself. Uh, this excludes the officers that are outside the event. Meanwhile, the Fiji Secondary School Athletics Association General Secretary says the competition will be different from previous years. Yes, we expect this year's one to be bigger and better. It's already big in terms of participants and big in terms of schools. Uh, and the, um, the feedback that we get from schools, everybody's looking forward to the, the championship. I get calls from schools left, right and center. The Coca-Cola Games will begin on Thursday and end on Saturday at Suva's ANZ Stadium. Luciana Tangeda Kimbao, FBC Sports. With less than 48 hours before the Coke Games begins, athletes have been taking every opportunity to have a feel of the tracks at the NZ Stadium. FBC Sports reporter Luciana Tangedakimbao has been following a few of these schools in the lead up to the Games and joins us now live from Ladala Bay with a preview of what to expect this weekend. Okay, yes, Jeremy, as you're aware, we just a day left for the much-anticipated Coca-Cola Games that is ready to kick-start on Thursday. Uh, just a while, Jamie, our uh, two athletes, we had uh, Jim Bolacoro of QVS and Tony Lemeki of Morris Brothers High School, were seen uh, testing the tracks uh, just a while ago. So uh, these two, Bolacoro and uh, Lemeki, will feature in the 100 meters final come Friday night. Well, apart from that, the defending champions in the boys' division, Natamboa High School, will try to defend the title, but in on the other hand, uh, Jamie, we have uh, RKS, KVS and MBHS who will try to uh, outpace uh, Natamboa. That goes, uh, Jamie, likewise in the girls division, we have uh, St. Joseph and uh, Jasper Williams who will try and snatch the title from uh, ACS. Well, uh, <clears throat> this year, Jamie, we have a total of 157 schools that will compete at this year's Coca-Cola Games. 
Well, with the, you know, just to summarize, Jamie, with the increase of uh, schools uh, this year, uh, this year's competition will be is seen as one of the toughest and exciting Coca-Cola games compared in the previous years. Jamie. Thank you, Lucy. Uh, the Fiji Sports Council is reminding spectators and participants to be mindful of the law and security procedures at the NZ Stadium during the Coca-Cola Games. With over 10,000 people anticipated to attend the event on Friday and Saturday, the council is undertaking strict security measures. Sports Council Operations Manager Elena McDonald says their job is to maintain the safety of athletes and spectators as well as its premises over the duration of the Games. And for this reason, necessary security measures have been put in place. Yeah, so, you know, it's three big days of competition. Um, and we want to remind everyone, if you want to make sure that you get inside the venue, if you want to make sure that you have a good time, please be reminded that we've got very high security at the gates. There will be bag checks. And these bag checks will be to check through everything and anything to make sure that this event, we deliver a safe event. So please be reminded that if you do look to test the system, there's a zero tolerance towards this. Having just returned from the Commonwealth Games and already Fiji's top athletes are thinking of the next competition to take on. For Fiji's only gold medalist at the Games, Eileen Rikamatana and bronze medalist Apollonia Vaivai in Winston Hill, the 2020 Olympic Games is the next big goal. Vashnil Prasad has more. Taking time out from her busy schedule, the young iron lady of Fiji, Eileen Rikamatana, believes she has more to give to the sport of weightlifting. Her achievement at the Commonwealth Games speaks volumes of the sacrifices put in by her and the family members. It's not easy. Um, getting to go away from, um, away from your family, it's hard since I'm the second youngest, I'm closer to my family. The first year was very hard because uh, every time we spoke over the phone, it was a crying session. Team Fiji arrived from Australia last night looking tired after the long trip. Dika Matana's teammate, Apollonia Vaivai, who won a bronze medal, revealed she could have done better than what she achieved. Yeah, it was, uh, it was tough, but uh, I missed out on the, the, the goal, and, uh, but I'm lucky to come with the bronze. The doors have opened for boxer Winston Hill, who has received the IOC 2020 Tokyo Scholarship to prepare for the future games. So he will be getting assistance, uh, financial assistance for his preparation towards uh, Tokyo 2020. We'll be st staying in the amateur ranks um, for the next Olympics in 2020, but uh, closer is the uh, Pacific Games, so we're looking to have a strong team. Commonwealth Games is done and dusted. Their focus now tends to the Pacific Games next year and then the Olympic Games in Japan. Vashnil Prasad, FBC Sports. While there were intentions to give incentives for Fijian athletes who win medals at the Commonwealth Games, the Fiji Sports Commission says nothing was finalized with Fasenok prior to the Games. Minister for Youth and Sports Johnny Tuitumbo says they will look into the possibility of facilitating this. However, he cannot confirm anything as yet. Eroni Tuinuku has more. The Fiji Sports Commission is still in the dark with regards to the incentives and hopes to get a feedback from Fasenok as per their previous discussion. Lorraine Ma from Pasenok had discussions um, with Patrick Bauer when we met at some time ago and Lorraine was going, at that stage was going to write to the Commission uh, with a proposal to include incentives for athletes. To date we haven't received anything from Fasenok on that. However, Minister for Youth and Sports Licenia Tuitumbo says it's most likely for athletes to receive the incentives, but no decision has been made yet. But the incentive will, will be decided uh, or whether it will be given to, to the national sporting organization or to the individual. The Fiji Sports Commission is waiting for Fasenok's proposal regarding the issue before the last says goes to give or not to give the incentives for the athletes. Eroni Tuinuku, FBC Sports. Australian rules player Dylan Robertson spent the night in hospital after his frightening collapse during St. Kilda's AFL loss to Geelong. Robertson had lined up for his centre bounce in the second quarter on Sunday when he suddenly fell to the ground. His playing future is still unclear as medical experts continue their search for the cause of his on-field collapse. <laughs> That's it from Sports Tonight. Join Angie later on with weather and in the world of the weird and the wonderful. 
Check out the robot that collects rubbish from rivers. That's coming up. Bula, Kera my singer Doka, Kera and Dotali Taka Navarro Rong and the Radio Fiji One and Domoy Viti. I have an In new media, Chinese mobile vendor has further built on its concept Mimic series. Today, the company has unveiled a third-generation smartphone in this series. And it's weather time now with Angie. Hello there and welcome to the weather world. The weather has been fascinating for a while now and today was even brighter. We are currently having moderate conditions, which is why it's a bit cooler and nicer. Taking a look in the west for today, after a few passing showers, the day turned out to be absolutely beautiful. Eastwards from Back Harbor to Suba, the hot sun was a bliss, another cold night is expected. And up north, skies were mostly cloudy with light showers expected overnight. At sea, southeast winds gusting up to 30 knots with very rough seas. For the tides, low tide is at 7.44 p.m. with high tide at 1.45 a.m. Sunrise will be at 6.16. For tomorrow, our good friend, the sun will farewell us for a bit. In return, we'll have showers and intervals of heavy showers. Tomorrow's temps, Suva will be the coolest at 27 degrees. And looking further on to Thursday, showers are expected to continue, so keep safe. And that's all from the FBC Weather World. Jackie. Thanks so much for that, Angie. In Fiji and Pulse tonight, we asked, will you be interested in taking up shares in the EFL and why? Uh, yes, I would be interested in buying shares in FPA or Energy Fiji Limited. Uh, the reason is because it's the only energy company we have in Fiji. Yes, because no, no risk. Life is hard, so in order to gain some money like that. Yeah, I'll be interested because um, I'll get uh, returns from my investment. Uh, yes, of course. And the only reason is because I'll be getting more money. In the world of the weird and the wonderful, Urban Rivers has developed a robot that collects rubbish from the Chicago River. The robot connects to the internet, allowing it to be controlled from anywhere in the world, and web users can also make donations to help pay for maintenance costs. Recapping the main stories, meningococcal disease claims four lives, FEA fully corporatized and has a new name, and 75% of homes in Kandavu damaged due to TC Kenny. Now for these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. To our poll question this week, we are asking, should harsher sentences be given out to those attacking police officers? Visit our FBC website to answer. Before we go, our shot of the day was sent in by Ashim Khan. The beautiful view was captured at the Navatu Secondary School at Natewa Bay. Remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it with us by Facebook page FBC News. You can also follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC underscore news or simply tag FBC News. And that was your FBC News for tonight. Before we leave, I'd like to take this opportunity to wish FBC TV News a happy sixth birthday. Six years today, FBC broadcast its first television news. Thank you for watching and staying connected with us. From the team and I, good night. Radio Fiji One and Domoy Viti. I have an 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 I have
kitu tanetajiri ya kitu venezuelae kuna kutu rongo wa rongo ena Radio Fiji 1 nandumu ibiti na Radio Fiji 1 nandumu ibiti na wonga ni BNN